Um, aloha, and uh, uh, welcome to the distinguished grad faculty and the uh, students, most importantly, the ohana that you all bring with you. Um, congratulations to the class. You guys have reached the end of a fairly long and rigorous journey. Uh, you've completed your last final exams. Uh, you wrapped up your last uh, soil analysis on the volcanoes and probably finished your dissertation on Hawaiian poetry. And now, following this milestone on the occasion of your graduation, you get to dream like the rest of us. You know, the anxious dreams of waking up and you're, you're in the middle of a class you've never been to before and it's the final exam. Um, welcome to the rest of your life and uh, the little, little anxiety and, and the curiosity that's ahead of you. I'm very honored to be the last person you hear from before you will walk across this stage and get your hard-earned diplomas. I'd imagine that the university had invited me to speak here today in front of you, not only because I'm a part-time Big Island resident, but also because they took some pity on, me, uh, pity on me. You see, the idea for Yahoo was born when I was procrastinating in my PhD in electrical engineering at Stanford. I figured that was going to ring a bell with this group. And, um, and, and the company at Yahoo took off before I had the chance to finish my degree. So I never, now by the way, I'm not recommending you drop out, it's too late, you guys already got your degrees, or you're gonna get your degrees. <laughs> but so I never really got my PhD, and that I will get an honorary doctorate today without even setting foot in the lab is quite amazing, so mahalo. Now, my real job here today is to spend about 10 minutes or so to share some of my personal stories with all of you, so you can go on and do great things with your new degrees and in your lives. So I like to do that in bullet points. I'm sort of a tech guy, so I like to keep it point to point. Um, point one, don't let the news get you down. Let me read you some headlines. Quote, college grads labor against shrinking job market openings, drop 13% this year, unquote. And uh, second headline, quote, America broadens its deployment in the Middle East, unquote. Third, quote, U.S. taxpayers to spend billions bailing out failing financial institutions, unquote. Now, you might think that's today's headlines. In fact, those were the headlines in the year 1990 when I sat where you were for my graduation. The future looked pretty bleak back then, didn't it? Now, some people may say that I took the easy way out. I went to graduate school, and, but the reality was that I couldn't find a job, even with an engineering degree from Stanford. The point is that great things will come out of times of adversity. Patricia talked about that. It all comes down to your outlook. Mark Twain once defined an optimist as, quote, a person who travels on nothing from nowhere to happiness, unquote. I can promise you that great things are being started right now in this downturn in our economy. Yahoo started an economic downturn in the early 90s. Other great companies, great ideas, products, even social movements, as people are throwing away the status quo, we're doing everything in new ways. In some ways, there is not a better time to be a graduate and to be part of this renewal. Okay, point two. You get out of life what you put into it. Sounds pretty cliche, right? Well, success doesn't come from high IQ or talent. It takes a willingness to work hard. In a recent book by Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers, he introduced the 10,000 hour rule, which holds that it takes about 10,000 hours of hard work and practice of anything, which is about 10 years of time, to become a world-class expert in anything. So the difference between a good violinist and a virtuoso comes down to ambition and having the discipline to put in the requisite time. As someone once said, in golf, as in life, it's the follow through that makes the difference. Now my mother taught me the rules of perseverance. While I've certainly faced challenges since founding Yahoo, they were nothing compared to what my mom faced coming to the US as a single parent from Taiwan with two young boys and a few suitcases. I was 10 at the time, and the only English word I knew was the word shoe. I don't know why I know the word shoe, but that was the word I knew. It could have easily been very discouraging and easily 
uh, I could have felt that the society was not going to be in my favor. But I worked hard, I studied hard, and even played hard along the way. Yes, good timing and some luck played in the role in my starting Yahoo, but there is just no substitute for hard work and relentless preparation. And along the way, I had a great family and friends to support me. Many of you already know that, especially those of you who have Ohana has taken up 10 or 15 seats in the stadium here. Um, we get all of our strength and love from our family and friends. Now, of course, when I told my mom that I was dropping out of Stanford PhD program to start a company um, to basically sell internet advertising for a living, she wasn't too keen on the idea. But she supported me, and now, these days, she doesn't complain very much. <laughs> okay, point three. Do what you love, even if it takes you down strange alleys. When David Philo and I were in our graduate student trailer at Stanford, we were supposed to be spending time doing research, figuring out algorithms to do faster and more efficient digital design for chips. I'm glad we didn't stick with that one. But then we discovered this cool new thing called the web, and suddenly our dissertation wasn't so interesting anymore. To be honest, I'm not sure it was ever was. But we eventually spent more hours cataloging the web and looking at web links than we did work on our thesis. We slept on the floor of our trailer. One of us would be programming and looking at the website. The other one would be sleeping. We did it out of love and passion. We never thought it would turn into a business. We just figured, hey, if the people kept coming to our website, we were doing a great service and we were having fun. Eventually, others saw the opportunity. A venture capitalist was even crazy enough to give us a million dollars to turn it into a business. The lesson here is not for you guys to go pursue a career as a professional guitar hero player, but rather be open to serendipity and possibilities. If you find something that feels right, but it doesn't fit into this master plan in your head, maybe take a chance and commit to it and working hard. You shouldn't be afraid to let passion get behind the wheel, and you might really love where you end up. To quote Robert Louis Stevenson, quote, sit loosely in the saddle of life, unquote. 